it, you know, as at home, and probably the only thing that we're going to do is is get a, a stool analysis, right? Because that's probably the thing that we can do. So what if we're looking for strains, important strains of uh, bacteria, uh, could you talk, I mean, what, what are like the top three strains? Is it possible to kind of focus down on that or narrow down? I, I can't narrow it to strains, uh, okay. but I can give some general ideas. And I uh, alluded to one genus, which is bifidobacterium. There's mm. many species of bifidobacterium and um, maybe hundreds, if not thousands of strains. Um, yeah, so probably but, that was my fault. Yeah, strains is the wrong yeah. word. I guess species is the word I was looking for. So I think bifidobacterium is a really interesting um, bug in the sense that it's a primary degrader of a lot of these fibers. And uh, it produces a short chain fatty acid called acetate. And acetate then feeds the secondary uh, degraders that produce you know, butyrate and propionate, which are two other short chain fatty acids. So as bifido is to the primary degraders, there's another class of bacteria um, called Clostridium cluster four and 14A species that are the butyrate producers. So you can just think of these two major buckets. Um, and those are things like um, Ruminococcus and Fecalibacterium prosnitzii and Rosburia. And I can name a bunch more, Eubacterium. Uh, they all fall into this group, this cluster of Clostridium cluster four and 14 species, not to be confused with Clostridium difficile, right? That's mm -hmm. a bad bug. That's in cluster one. These are good bugs. These are the uh, larger than butyrate producers. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So I, uh, just a little thing, diversion. So Acomancia, Acomancia municifilia, um, is there any way of particularly uh, promoting the growth of that one? So um, it's great. Acromancia uh, mucinophilia, as its name implies, <laughs> loves mucus. And, and in fact, it, it um, promotes uh, this secretion um, through factors that it, it itself secretes of mucus uh, by um, the lining uh, in the lower intestine. Um, and uh, so that's its, its primary food. Um, and uh, it's been linked uh, with health, um, in particular metabolic health, um, I believe lower rates of um, obesity and diabetes, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and in fact, it's actually a butyrate producer as well. Uh, maybe that's one of the ways it's working. Maybe there's other, other ways. Um, but um, it's, it's an interesting uh, bug. And um, there's, in my mind, a little bit of question, is it a good thing for it to be consuming the mucus? Um, you know, it also is a bug that increases rather than decreases with age and that's an interesting correlation um so th there's questions in my mind but um there there is you know a bit of uh, quite a bit of research showing that giving either the live bug or the dead bug as it turns out may impact metabolic health uh so yeah i'm, I'm following that literature closely uh i i'm also um and perhaps um, more intrigued by uh, bifidobacterium and the clostridium cluster four and fourteen a species. So, what would be the best way for us to know that our our, our gut is out? We have dysbiosis, shall we say? Um, is it just to take a stool sample, or can we kind of tell from symptoms? Mm. Yeah. Um, so I. I think the, the obvious answer is, well, if you're you know, having gut issues, right? Yeah. Some bloating or abdominal discomfort or you know, diarrhea, constipation, then you know, maybe um, your gut health isn't in balance. Um, but what we're learning uh, with the gut being the, one of the cores of health um, is, is that symptoms that we wouldn't normally associate with gut health, um, you know, 
symptoms may be relating from the gut brain access um, and gut metabolism access, um, inflammation uh, may actually be stemming from the gut. And as things as uh, counterintuitive as mood and mm -hmm. sleep may actually, in some people, maybe a lot of people, uh, be related in part uh, to to the gut. So, so how do we know which symptom mm. you know is 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 right. coming from the gut? It's 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 hard to say. And is it worth uh, you know collecting a stool sample and and sending it off to you know the half a dozen uh, operations now that provide that service? Um, that's almost a whole whole different uh, conversation. I think it's super right. interesting. Um, and maybe there's some predictive uh, power there, but I think um, a lot of um, that predictive power, certainly um, the expertise isn't there for physicians who will receive these printouts from, from their patients and say, what do I do with this? Um, and just like yeah. genetic testing too, there's this sort of question, well, what do you, do psychologically with that information, right? Like mm -hmm. if there's a way to intervene, great. But um, if it's just this like notion of, well, you may be predisposed to developing ulcerative colitis in the future. Is, is that a good thing to know? Yeah. <laughs> right? is, and, and do you need some, some sort of counseling before you hear that information that the companies are sort of keyed into these really important issues now, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of debate around these, these home sampling um, enterprises. And there are definitely some enterprises that are doing it in a very responsible uh, and I think informative way. Right. Yeah, I mean, I could certainly see that, that uh, being able to interpret a, a stool sample and seeing what bugs you have, it, it would be non-trivial in terms of... Uh,